I'm still as an adult quite heavily influenced by my childhood TV viewing, especially of Oliver Postgate and Peter Furman series. Things like Pogel's Wood was a bit of an obsession for me. They were sort of like my family. My mum was a window dresser for shops. She kind of taught me, I think, from quite an early age to be creative. Saw an article in a magazine about a lady whose needle felt in. I bought one of those little kits and I did it and I thought, oh, I can do this. They emerge by chance, really, like a lot of creative stuff does. You don't have a five-year plan that says in five years' time I'm going to be making needle felted dogs dressed in clothes. When you first start off with the raw wool, I have an idea as to where I'm going because I have an idea of the type of dog I want to make. I don't make exact breeds, so I know, for example, oh, I'm going to make an Irish Terrier, but then somewhere along the process you have to trust the wool as well, so sometimes that Irish Terrier might come out looking very like an Irish Terrier and you think, oh, that's quite realistic, isn't it? And sometimes it won't turn out like that at all, but I won't then change it. I go, no, actually, that's what I'm looking for, really, rather than a realistic interpretation. My dog I've had since he was a fairly young pup and now he's an old guy and his personality has changed. Dog owners love to tell you about the personality of their dog. They would go out in wet weather, they wouldn't, they'd like to sleep under a duvet all day. People like that and especially when you do commissions, you know, I always get the photographs but then I always get people to give me a description of their dog. What is your dog like? Which then enables you to think about, well, what would that dog wear? Skill-wise, there's the needle felting and there's being adept at knowing how to manipulate the wool to get the shapes and the sizes that you want. I make the majority of the clothes. Some of the clothes are still well-sourced vintage pieces. About two or three years ago I started knitting the actual jumpers, so that's quite a skill because then you have to work on very tiny needles. I started using old knitting patterns for Cindy dolls from the 60s and then I know a woman who started making me patterns. Then there's the sewing, knowing how to use material, make little trousers, little pinafores, make the little coats. Shoes, I recover old action men boots in leather to make them sturdier. It means there's lots of layers to what the actual product is. People see that and the attention to detail, making things I think is what draws people in. Although you can needle felt a lot of different dogs' faces, if you're constantly needle felting, that's all you're doing. So I derive a great deal of pleasure in thinking, oh, yes, I'm going to try a different dog and different head shape, and different ears, and that's nice. But then I can also think, actually, I'm going to experiment in making a new piece of clothing. I used to think that I'd made a rod for my own back by saying every dog is individual and unique. I sometimes think, well, if I'd just done 10 dogs that were all the same and just sold them, life would be a lot easier, but it wouldn't be as interesting. Making each dog slightly different is where the excitement comes. The dogs always come alive once you put the facial features on, especially the noses. You'd think it'd be the eyes. I can dress a dog in an outfit and think, yeah, that's finished. And then there's something nags you about it and you keep looking at it and you go, it isn't alive, there's something wrong and it's just the outfit. And so sometimes you really have to fiddle with what they're wearing before the two things merge together and you go, it's got a life now, I can see it. People often like to see the dogs en masse, like in a show, which is great because they can imagine all these characters interacting in some way. I had a lady a couple of years ago who said, my husband is going to say, what on earth have you bought now? She said, I will tell him I have bought something that will make me smile every day.